Hi guys, good morning and welcome to the Delfina Show. First of all, I want to apologize, I'm a day late and just so you know, October has been a crazy month. So just a little bit of housekeeping. I will be having some custom bags with Native Fiber, my good friend Megan for Indian Tangled starting tomorrow, which is super exciting. And on top of that, I am also part of the Black Mountain Fiber Extravaganza on October 31st. I will be launching a brand new sweary collection with all the fabulous print from the super talented Cynthia Frenette. And I also have a secret project with my friend Richard DeVries, which will be coming up very soon. And what else? Oh, I also have a big collab with my friend Genevieve from Colorista, so stay tuned. Anyways, without further ado, this week, my guest is a fabulous lady. She wears so many hats. She is a mother, a wife. She's also the owner of Pastry Fiber Adventures, which she actually just acquired last year. And anyways, you'll actually get to know her. She actually pivoted from being a retreat centered company to now offering virtual classes. So this week, my guest is Kristen Walker, the Knitting Yugi. Please stay tuned. ready to chat that's awesome <laughs> good day what's exciting, what's exciting in your life right now what's exciting in my life right now you know i have been so busy with all the things um work and knitting things and um i barely have time to have things that are exciting <laughs> so uh um i've been super psyched about the way that my virtual classes have been going so that's really exciting that's better than I ever could have hoped. So that's really cool. Is there anything yeah. missing in your life at the moment? Anything missing in my life? You know, I think some family type connections are missing in my life right now. And, you know, travel and all that sort of thing. But I don't get to see one of my kids as often probably as I would because he lives in New Jersey. So it's just who, who wants to travel right now. So I'd say that's kind of missing at the moment. How do you start your morning? How do I start my morning? Coffee. Hardcore. I, I wake up dreaming of coffee. So I get up, I go straight for the coffee and I have coffee and I have a rice cake with peanut butter and bananas on it. Unless it's the weekend, in which case I usually have Oreos with my coffee, <laughs> which are one of my favorite foods. <laughs> There's a good or a bad news. Who do you call? Uh, probably one of my best friends, Fran or Allison. What's the best book you've read recently? Ooh, best book I've read recently. Actually, it's funny that you asked that. The book I'm reading right now, which is called The Anonymous Girl, is really okay. good. Really good. Good. I am digging that book. What song Thriller. can you not stop singing? You know what song is in my head, and I only know like four words or seven words. <laughs> it's the song Psycho Killer. Okay. By Talking Heads. And it goes, Psycho Killer, Qu'est-ce que c'est? And that's all I know. And it's on repeat in my head. It was at the end of a movie. It was, at, uh, it was on the show, um, The Boys, that's on Amazon. And it was right at the end of an episode. And that's the, and it's for like two weeks. It's bold brow or bold lips? Um, I like a good, well, see, I have this eyebrow that I 
of the rock. <laughs> so I, I do that all the time. I, I gave myself wrinkles right here by doing that so much, by doing the eyebrow so much and my other eyebrows falling down because of it. So I definitely like a good eyebrow and I like, I would say personally, I'm probably more of like this neutral. When you feel most beautiful. I feel, I think I feel most beautiful when I'm, I love the process of getting ready. You know what I mean? Like if you have a special occasion and you're going to a wedding or you're going to a fancy dinner or whatever, I love the process of getting ready and putting music on and I do my makeup and I do my hair and, you know, and I really, I probably feel the most beautiful right at the end of that <laughs> because I've really invested quite a bit of time at that point. Um, and when do you feel the most fulfilled? Most fulfilled. I feel the most fulfilled when, for sure, when my kids are all home. So I always say like three kids, one roof is the best to me. So when my husband, you know, my kids are home and my husband's here, which he's always here, but you know what I mean? Like everybody's together. It just makes me the happiest. So you're married? I am married. I've been married for 26 years. So did you, what's your husband's name? His name is Brett with two T's. That's an important distinction. <laughs> and so, so how did you meet Brett? Okay. We have actually a very good story. It's actually like a very, it's a good story. So good. Um, I met him when I was 11 years old. We went to um, like sixth grade. We started sixth grade at the same school. So we went to sixth grade together and um, I moved into his neighborhood. So then we lived in the same neighborhood. And okay. in eighth grade, I had a very, very, very big crush on him. Like, and he was not really liking me back. And then <laughs> we went to our eighth grade like class trip was to an amusement park. So we go to the amusement park. You know the rides where it's like a movie and it's like a roller coaster? Yeah. You know what I mean? And you're whatever. So it was like that. So we went in there and we sat together and he held my hand twice. We went in there twice and he held my hand both times and then he, nothing happened. And then that was ir irritating. So then <laughs> we were friends like all through high school and everything. And and when we were in 12th grade, he sat behind me in math and he used to sing like TV theme songs and stuff like from back there and yeah. whatever. It was funny. We were walking down the hall to go math together. And he, this little 10th grader girl that he liked was walking towards us. And he was like, I'll talk to you later and blew me off and went, you know, with the girlfriend. So then we get out of high school, we go to different colleges, you know, whatever. And I used to walk my dog by his house too, on purpose, like that if he might come outside and see me and talk to me. So after college, we ran into each other in a bar. Like I was out with my brother because my brother was home from college and he was out with friends and whatever. And there was yep. this one bar we always hung out at, everyone always went to. So we run into him in the bar and, and I remind him of the amusement parks story. Incident. Yeah. where he held my hand and then blew me off. So he told me that he was going to take me out on a date to make up for that. And two days went by and he didn't call me. So I just called him. And then we went out that like Friday night and we go to like drinks and we go to the movies and then we went to more drinks and we're sitting there having drinks. And he goes, I kind of feel like I'm going to marry you <laughs> like that. So first day. Okay. And I'm like, oh, okay. Cool. You know, so then we got engaged like four months later and we got married the next year and that was 26 years ago. So in the end, I won. <laughs> so pretty much you liked who first, you liked him first, but then he came back later pretty much. Right. Yes. What would Brett say your best quality is? Oh my God. Uh, he would say that I am very... Probably, I don't know if he would use the word fierce, but like that, like in terms of like loving our kids or our family or my work or whatever, I am just like all in all the time. And he, he says that all the time. So I think he would say something like that. Are you an early bird or a night owl? I would say, ugh, I would say neither. I have, um, I work from home now, so I don't get up to like 7.30 in the morning, which feels late 
seven thirty. Yeah, you, know, you know what I mean. Like that feels late. But I would say mm, it's late for I me. Say, <laughs> yeah, I would say early. No, I guess I would say early. I, even though I might stay up to like eleven o'clock at night. Or tell people what you do, pretty much for somebody who doesn't know you. What do you yes. do? So somebody who doesn't know me, I do so many things. I am a wife. I am a mother. I work full time in the software industry. And I also do this, you know, knitting, knitting business where I, um, in, in a time before COVID, I would be having live retreats in person retreats and with instructors. And I would be going all over, well, you know, wherever in the U S or new England, whatever. And I would be having knitting retreats and people would be coming and it would be great. And we'd be doing yoga and we would be loving life. And since we don't have that, we do um, virtual classes. So I've been, I've been doing virtual classes and um, hosting those and that's been awesome. So as you, so I am busy all the time, basically with, with all that stuff, but, and I'm, I'm, a, I'm a maker and a, and a knitter and crafter and I just love all the things about all of those things. Amongst so them. I just want to, I just want to add that you were a guest on Christy Glass not too long ago. So I will is. put a link in the description box so people can actually find out a little more what is involved and what you used to do and how yes. it actually changed with, with COVID. So, right. and, and hopefully we'll get to do both moving forward. So Christine, do you have any pets? I have two pets. We have two dogs. They're half Boston Terrier and one's half miniature Schnauzer and one's half Cairn Terrier. So they're like 20 pounds, or, you know, like smaller. Hair, furry, smaller, like wiry hair. And if we get through this whole time without you hearing them bark, it's going to be a miracle. <laughs> so <laughs> they are barky, barky dogs. What's your favorite flavor? I know this more than anyone else would know this. I have three top flavors. Okay. They are peanut butter, maple, and banana. Very set on those. <laughs> <laughs> Very set on those. So if I ask you if you're more sweet or are you more salty, you're, you're a sweet person. Right? I'm going to say sweet. I do like the combo though. Yeah. But those three, and I ask people that all the time. That's like a, hmm? what's your secret talent? Oh my God. I have like, um, bionic smell, sense of smell. Okay. I can smell anything. <laughs> that might be, I, so that's what I call it. Bionic sense of smell. Cool. <laughs> That's like a weird thing. You know what? Well, okay. Knitting wise, what is, what is a secret talent of mine that I discovered when I took a class was that any kind of cast on, any kind of cast on, I can do it like it's my job. Like I am so good at casting on and I have no idea why I can just get it. Like the braided, the, all the things I can just do. them. What color do you gravitate around the most? Purpley. My hair is actually pretty purple at the moment. You just kind of can't tell in this light. Are you more uh, heels like a stiletto person or flat shoes? I think at this point in my life, I'm mostly going to go with comfort, but I do like a high, I do love some high heeled shoes. I definitely. Well, I love looking at them, but I, I couldn't, like sometimes I dig in my stuff and I find, I find like old shoes I had. Mm -hmm. There's no way I can wear them anymore. <laughs> I know. And they're like so beautiful and they make your legs look so beautiful, but then you're dying. You know, I mean, so if I went to a wedding or something, I wouldn't be able to walk for like three days afterwards. That's it. Are you more diamonds or pearls? Diamonds. Christine, if you were ruling the world, what would be the first law you would actually put in place? Equal rights for everybody. If I was looking into your purse right now, aside your wallet and your cell phone, name me five things I would find in that bag. You would find probably five to seven lipsticks. Okay. A nail file. Yeah. Glasses. Yeah. Besides my wallet and my cell phone. Hand sanitizer. Uh, yeah. And um, hand moisturizer. What's your favorite vacation spot when you can travel? <laughs> I know. Um, oh, that's a hard one. That's a, that's a hard one. The, the place that I fell in love with most recently is New Mexico. And uh -huh. 
when I turned 50, which was last year, um, my girlfriends, a couple girlfriends and I went to New Mexico. I had never been there as an adult and I had only been to Albuquerque briefly, like as a kid or whatever. And I just hadn't really been to that area very much. And I just was in love with the landscape and colors and everything. I, I loved every single thing about it. And I, and I lately have been really wanting to go back there. And we had a house on a mountain. I mean, it was just, it was amazing. Amazing. So I would say that for now, but I also love Maine very much. What's your favorite cocktail? I like that. And I like my gin and tonics with lime and cucumber. Well, of course. Oh, and you know what else? I, oh, I sound like a lush now, but, um, dark and stormies. What's that? So that's, you have to use dark spiced rum, yeah. which I'm not a rum lover, but I mean, in this case, so it's a dark spiced rum and okay. ginger beer and lime. The ginger beer in first and then the rum on top of it. So it's like dark like at the it. top and, you know, delicious. <laughs> Sounds good. Dark and stormy. Yes. Well, you pretty much answered the question, this question earlier, but are, are you more tea or coffee? Coffee. No One doubt. thing the world needs to get rid of. <laughs> okay, <laughs> next question for perfect. What's your, spirit, what's your spirit animal? This is gonna sound weird, but fish. Why? Um, I'm a Pisces, oh. and I love. I'm very drawn to water and and those sorts of things. So I I I, I don't know. I I like buy jewelry with fish on it and stuff like that. So, Christine. If you could give your 13-year-old self any advice, what would it be? It would be to, ha I'm trying to think how to word it right. It would be to not have your self-esteem caught up and tied to if a boy liked you or not. That's a very wise advice. Yes, and to just be, and to love yourself and to not be yourself and be confident in that version of yourself. And that, and that 13 year old, ugh, that's like the worst age ever. What's your favorite band of all time? I would have to say currently, even though I'm a newer fan of this band, I would call them my favorite band of all time, which is a band called OAR. And they're from Maryland. And they've been around a long time, but I just started liking them in the last couple of years. And I love them. I love so many things about them and their lyrics and the whole thing. And I got a tattoo of one of their lyrics and that's, you gotta like them. <laughs> Who's so, the last person you texted? My best friend's son-in-law to build me some shelves in my, in my craft room. And it's okay. like this big of a room, but. <laughs> <laughs> well, <I can't> really. <laughs> <Sorry. laughs> What's the last YouTube channel you watched? Last night I watched a, uh, I think it was called Master Stitchery, and it was about sewing um, like an overlock stitch with my sewing machine. That was last night. And what's the last audio podcast you listen to? Or, or are you in two radio podcasts, like audio podcasts? Yeah, I don't listen to podcasts that much now, only because I don't, I used to listen to things more when I drove places, but I yeah. work from home, mm -hmm. COVID, so I'm never hardly in my car. Um, but a podcast that I listened to recently that I loved was, um, do you remember the show My So-Called Life? Uh, Jared Leto was in it and Claire Danes was in it. It was on for one season and it was on in the early 90s. But anyways, there was a podcast called My So-Called Podcast and it was about that show and it was, I loved it. It was great. It was really good. What's your worst habit? My worst habit? I'm sure there's some. <laughs> um, I would say probably eating, I eat sweets every night before bed, like in bed. And I think that's probably not the best. Who do you look up to most in life? Who do I look up to most? That's, a, I don't know. Who do I look up to? I don't know. That's fine. Hmm. We'll go on with the next one. Well, I'm going to think about that though, because that's sort of interesting, I, I think. <laughs> what is the first thing you notice about a person? Um, probably their teeth. 
<laughs> and I would smile. Fair enough. Um, yeah, I mean, physically that. And then I would notice if somebody was, I hate that. I can't stand that. So. Fair enough. Fair enough. <laughs> um, what big life changes have you been through lately? So, oh my God. So, I mean, a lot, obviously everybody with COVID, you know, total craziness. Um, you know, with that, I mean, the, in the last, you know, six years, I would say like two of my kids have gone to left home and gone to college and one never came back or he came back a little bit and then he moved and one's back and he works from home. And then, um, you know, taking over this business of with the no yoga retreats, I've only had that since just coming up on a year in November, haven't been able to do anything. I mean, retreat wise, except having the um, virtual classes. So I totally had to like, you know, like everybody else did have to like change on a dime and the whole thing and yep. switch up everything that you're doing and just really hustling. And then my work was super busy. And I mean, honestly, my husband, he lost his job because of COVID. So, I mean, he's schools here goofy. I don't know how it is where you live, but um, the schools here are just screwed up. And my daughter's in 12th grade and she's just home and virtually learning. And I guess they're going to go back to school in a few weeks, but oh, it's just <laughs> This year has just been it's kind of crazy. I know a lot, a lot. Yes, and we can't go to Canada. What's the last pretty penny you spent? Um, I would say we had to buy a car, so <laughs> I bought a that's car. A pretty big, that's that's a pretty penny. Yeah, that's a pretty penny. Yes, <laughs> buying, buying a car. Yes, that was. Yeah, <laughs> that was a bummer. Christine, what's the craziest thing you've done for someone? I got ordained as a minister so I could marry my best friend and her husband last week. That's, <laughs> that's amazing. <laughs> yes. And it was awesome and so fun. And I was so glad that I did it. That's great. What's the best sound in the world? I think, I think the best sound in the world is, is laughter. I do think that. All right. Here's a juicy question. Well, it's actually, it, it has several, several parts. Okay. So if you had a dinner party and you could invite living or death, a musician or a singer, okay. a politician, a famous couple, and one of your family member, who would that be? Okay. So I think I would have my husband for the family member, Brian Adams. Okay. We love him. He's alive. <laughs> but that would be great. Um, and a politician. Maybe like JFK. I don't know, like any of the like celebrities that are around now, like any of those. Maybe like Paul Newman and Joanne Woodward. I like that. That is cool. What would you be serving? What would I be serving? I think, hmm. That seems like it would be sort of fancy. Um, maybe I would do something like like a maybe like a surf and turf kind of thing, like filet and lobster and I like it. That sort of Caesar salad, that sort of thing. That's good. And what would be on the playlist? Well, we would have Brian Adams, so maybe we would have some <laughs> Brian, <laughs> Brian Adams, but we could also do um, maybe some nice classical in the background while we were chatting or what's the most beautiful thing in nature so many things right I mean so many things I would say um I well I mentioned earlier about the New Mexico you know so I am very enamored of that whole landscape in terms of yeah. like the red and the you know yellow and the it's almost like a light purple mountains and everything but I I also am very attracted to the ocean and you know waterfalls and, and that sort of thing so um i would say those things together and right now it being autumn i live in new york you know western new york so of course the leaves and everything i mean just oh it's breathtaking it's gorgeous i love it what's your favorite candy reese's <laughs> <laughs> well, 
What good happened to you today or this week? We got to get together with some friends on Friday night, which was really nice. And, you know, just went outside by the fireplace. And it was just really nice to just be out of the house and chatting and having fun and having a drink and having laughs. And that, that was really nice. Oh, oh, and yesterday <laughs> I taught a beginner knitting class, which I had never done. And I did that yesterday. Where is your happy place? I would say anywhere that I can look at water. So the ocean, the a lake, anywhere that I can just sit and look at that water, I would call that my happy place. Beard or mustache? Oh, I am a facial hair girl. I do, I'm going to say both on that. I do like the facial hair. <laughs> so it doesn't have to be like giant, but I do like the facial hair. And you know who I should meet? You know, and because I know you talked to him was Cabin Boy Knits. Mm -hmm. so his name is Christopher Walker. Yep. Right? And my name is Christine Walker. If you could start your life over, is there anything you'd do differently? No. I don't Fair think enough. so. No, I don't think so. Because I think that all of the trials and tribulations that one person might have, like I could say like, I want to change this, 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 and this because that sucked and this was terrible and whatever. But I think then all of those things lead you to where I am now. So, and I'm good with those things and I might be different if I didn't have terrible things. How'd mm -hmm. you define success? And that's success. I like it. When's the last time you said, I told you so? <laughs> <laughs> My husband would probably say, <laughs> I don't know, an hour ago. Uh, <laughs> I don't ever say the words, I told you so. <laughs> but, you know, it's like, well, I mean, what'd you think was going to happen, <laughs> you know? Mm -hmm. uh, so I, I can't think of a very totally specific instance, but. Um, At least once a day. I, I mean, can't relate. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> what charity is most deserving of our money? Lately, you know, I've been donating a lot to, um, you know, charities that help um, in terms of social equality, in terms of, you know, Black Lives Matter and those types of things. But I'm also very, um, the LGBTQ plus community is very near and dear to my heart as well. So, um, and, and you know, anything having to do there and, and one of the newer charities there is the, which I just learned about was Knit the Rainbow, which I've been, you know, done some things for too, which, um, you know, that number of homeless LGBTQ plus youth is staggering. And that it, that's just astounding to me. So, anything I can do to help there is I, I'm welcome to. And I wish other people would too, just because I want to be like everybody's mother when I hear about, <laughs> about those kinds of things, you know. What was cool when you were younger, but isn't so cool anymore? Big hair. I'm going on record as saying <laughs> I miss it. What goal do you think humanity is not focusing enough energy on? Uh, I think um, the climate and equality, for sure. Is there any good tips or tricks that you pick up from your past jobs or experiences? Something you'd like to share? I think, you know, I think that just in everything, you have to just, you know, be kind. You just have to, you know, I have a tattoo on each of my feet and one says, be kind always. And the other one says, live and let live, you know, and that's really how I think I, I don't know. I don't walk in anyone else's shoes. I walk in my shoes and, you know, and so I would say that is really just in life. And I, and I try to not judge and I try to not assume and I try to not, and I do do those things. I try not to, I mean, I'm not sitting here saying I'm perfect or anything. I, I just really, really, really try. And sometimes if I have a reaction that's like um, judgy, I try to catch myself that I'm, you know, and why do I think that? And why, you know, what is offensive to me or what is upsetting me that I have to think that? Um, you know, I just, that's all you can do, right? And I just try to be 
and, and I work in customer facing, you know, jobs with my soft, I work in a software industry that's customer facing with the knitting stuff is customer facing. So I always want to try to be, um, just to make someone's day better and easier and not be part of their problem <laughs> you know, and be part of their solution. So I would say that is just, if you, if you're kind, give me an example of procrastination. Oh, procrastination. I do not procrastinate huh. because it makes me yeah. crazy. <laughs> <laughs> and that is probably my biggest pet peeve is that is procrastination. If that's a question, because um, I can't stand that. I can't stand to have anything hanging over my head. I can't, I don't understand why anybody would procrastinate and I don't. And it's funny because my stepfather is a psychologist. He's a clinical psychologist and his PhD, his um, thesis was on procrastination. <laughs> so he That's wrote an 800 page paper on procrastination. And um, yeah, and I, I do, so I never, I never, I don't. You're good. <laughs> yeah. You're really it makes good. me crazy. I like my anxiety can't take it, you know. I just no. <laughs> Christine, let's get into a few fiber-related questions. Okay. Without you on a net, my meme. Yay! How old yeah. were you? I was well. I was older, so I was like thirty-four. So oh, wow! Yeah, I was so by like most of this community's standards, I was, you know, like you always hear like, oh, my grandmother taught me when I was eight or seven or whatever. So You're a I did, bloomer. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So I was pregnant with my third child and my grandmother was visiting from you know, whatever, Florida. She came up and, and she did all of the things like she knitted and crocheted and sewed and cruel and just all the things. And um, so anyway, so she came up and I was like, ma'am, we called her Mem. I said, Mem, I'm, I want you to treat me or teach me how to knit. And she goes, okay, fine. So we get, so <laughs> she was from, you know, like the depression time. So she, mm -hmm. and she was very, 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 very frugal. So yep. she really only knitted with yarn that either people gave her or was the cheapest yarn she could find and whatever. That was fine. That's what she liked. Great. She could, she never would have been able to use expensive yarn because she would have, it would have driven her nuts knowing how much it costs. So like she couldn't even take it. But anyway, so she, so she teaches me how to knit and she tells me I'm a terrible knitter. Like within five minutes, she's like, you're a terrible knitter. I'm like, well, I mean, like, give me a minute, you know? So I just dabbled in it for a few years and I made like, you know, scarves and whatever. And I never used expensive yarn she was like, go to the store and buy this brand because it's the cheapest. Like that's all she cared about was what was the cheapest. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, I was like, oh, okay, fine. You know? So actually I pulled this, this, I found this in the top of my closet. She made, she made this I'm trying to get it. So that's just all crocheted granny squares that she gave me like a long time ago and it was up in the top of my closet and I just recently found it. So and it's all like whatever. But um it's all acrylic. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's all acrylic. It's all been there. <laughs> yeah, it's there. So um yeah, so she taught me to knit and she she passed away when I was so I was 34 then. She passed away, I'm trying to think. Uh she's maybe been gone for like five years, maybe. So um, she never really knew how good I was getting in terms of knitting, you know? And so that's sort of a bummer, but because I think she'd be really proud. What does knitting or the community bring you? So much happiness. Um, I love everything about knitting and fiber and the community. And I love, I first of all, I love as we most all do love fiber and like, let me squish it and let me feel it. And, you know, let me pet all the fiber and the people and all the mm -hmm. things. And I love that. And I love all the people that I've met have been amazing. I mean, just, and not even people like you or people like Christy or people like, you know, Gigi or Denise or whoever, but just anybody, 
Like you just yeah. run into people at, you know, Rhinebeck or you run into people or, you know, or the people that go to the retreats or the people on Zoom and just, just the talent and the, you know, kindness and the, you know, willingness to learn and be together and just help others and whatever. It's just, it's the best. I mean, it's just so fulfilling and it just, it just like fills my heart. You know what I mean? Like, it's just so nice and I love it. Let's do a little show and tell of your whips. Okay. I got a bunch right around me right here. So well, let's go. Okay. So, um, <laughs> One of the ones, okay, so this is one I'm working on right now, which, ugh. so this, I bought this at Rhinebeck last year, where I became obsessed with cable sweaters. Mm -hmm. So this is the sweater that I decided should be my first cable sweater. I discovered afterwards that the sleeves are steeped too, so that's just fun. <laughs> so it's like the cabliest of cabled sweaters. I mean, look at that, please. So, oh, here's the back. That's awesome. It's yeah. funny because I just bought the Aspen cardigan by Michelle Wine. It's something like that, but it's like it goes down to the knees. Oh, I wanted like a wool coat. Yeah, yeah. So I got that and I was like, oh yeah, because I should learn how to do cables or whatever. So anyways, this is it so far. Wow. And I'm calling it the end of days sweater because it will take me approximately that long to finish yep. because it takes 45 minutes to go around once with all the oh, I can do it. I... Yeah. I'll be there with you very soon. Yeah. But I mean, I think it's so cool, you know? It is really cool. It's gorgeous. And, and I'm learning it and I'm doing it. And it's Harrisville. It's a Harrisville pattern and yep. Harrisville yarn. Yeah. And I got that at um, Rhinebeck last year. Awesome. Yeah. So that, that was very cool. Um, so that's one thing. Yeah. I, I was working on another thing that I can't show because I'm doing it for a gift, so I can't show that. Um, okay. and then I have, this is the beginning of a Norwegian sock, uh, slipper. That's so cool. So that's an at Scandi work pattern. So like, that's the heel, like, it's going to be like this, like, you know what I mean? Like, so I'm gonna, about to join what's going to be the top or the bottom, maybe this, either way. Um, yeah. So that's that. So that's Kristen Drysdale at Scandi work. So that's cool. That's a Hans Christian pattern cool. of that. And always, always, always socks <laughs> on the needles. So these are for Mr. Walker. So this, these are for my husband, but I always have socks going because that's what I just take with me or on the plane or wherever. You just always need a pair of socks that you're knitting. Mm -hmm. And so what's those, the are, those are my works in progress and the thing I can't show. And then I have a Birkin sweater lined up. So I just swatched for that because I got a kit from, you know, Barrett Wilco. I, I, they just had the kits again. So I got that. So I'm, I'm getting ready to go on that. Sounds good. I also just got, really good. <laughs> got yarn for the weekender and a Novelli tea. So, you know, and then, well, okay. So those are my works in pro progress right now. Awesome. Christine, who is your fiber idol? There's so many, I think. Just one. Here's the who I love. Yeah, here's who I love the most. And I truly, truly, truly love Gigi. <laughs> I love her. She is truly, and, and she hung out with us at our September virtual classes. She came on for like 90 minutes and we hung out. And she is just like the truest, most honest, wonderful person in the world. I mean, I, I don't know. I just she feel is. like. Yeah. And she gives the best dog in the world. <laughs> yeah, yes, I hugged her at Rhinebeck last year. She does. And she's so, I just love how she's so like, and if she's crying, she's crying. If she's happy, she's happy. If she's dancing, she's dancing, you know, and she's just true, you know, yeah. and, and I love that about her. So I, I'm, I'm going to go with Gigi for right now. <laughs> I love it. What project makes you the heart the proudest? Proudest. That okay. Was 
Yeah, I think I, that's why I brought some other stuff over. What, the, what makes me the proudest is, and I show this all the time, but I think it's true because it, it, I show this all the time, but it really does. The fact I was not a good knitter when I made this. Like, I mean, I was just starting out when I made that's this. Cool. And I had to teach myself interlock mm -hmm. and, you know, a crochet border didn't know how to do that, had to, you know, I learned how to knit backwards so I could do the, you know, not have to turn it every five seconds on the each mm -hmm. little square. So, I mean, I adore that. I just, and it yeah. reminds me of a court jester and <laughs> that might be why I like it so much. I don't know. And then, <laughs> and then my goal a couple of years ago was to make a sweater, a, a sweater with a yoke. That was a goal. So I made this. This is a, a knit love water. Yeah, dark water yeah. sweater. It's on the round yarn, which I love her yarn too. So that was my first sweater with a yoke. That's beautiful. Which I, love, which I just love, 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 love. That same year, which was 2019, I wanted to, my goals were learn how to make a sweater with a yoke, learn how to do brioche, yep. and make a dent in my queue. So the only one I did that year was the yoke. <laughs> <laughs> but I have since <laughs> learned brioche. So PDX Knitterati, Michelle Bernstein, um, I learned this from her. And I did make a hat, but I gave it to my friend as a gift. So, um, but I love this. I, I, brioche is so fun. I love brioche. I love it. I loved it too. I thought it was super fun. And the hat that I made was like heliotrope or something. So it was all like the, you know, like viney things. It came out yeah. awesome. Yeah, so super fun. So what's your ultimate fiber destination? I think Scotland. I would Fair. love to go, yeah, I would love to go for the the fiber festival there in Scotland. Yeah. yeah. Is there a fiber or textile skill that is actually missing in your toolbox? Is there something you'd like to learn? I don't know how to do um, beading. Okay. Into knitting and um other than that i bet i could do most things you know just because how you could learn you know you can just when once you know so much you can then figure out i think it's easier to learn other things so i can't think of anything like specifically but one thing that i don't totally um i'm not super good with is getting gauge and like figuring out how to correct some things with that. You know what okay. I mean? Like I, I knitted a sweater where I did a gauge, did a gauge swatch. It was fine. And then the sweater was wicked small. <laughs> so I was kind of like, you know, but thankfully my sister-in-law is smaller than me. So she got a nice gift, but uh, <laughs> you know, I tried to black block it very aggressively. <laughs> I didn't do it. Not even that, that didn't work. Not even that did. So. What's your best fiber event memory? Last year, well, okay, so last year was the first time we went to Rhinebeck. Yeah. And so we went to Rhinebeck, like it's like a whatever, October 20th, you know, last year. It was like October yeah. 20th, whatever. So that was right before I was taking over the business of knitting and yoga adventures that I bought. So it was like two weeks before that. And had already started getting really involved in the business and like reaching out to instructors for next year. And, um, you know, so I, had, so I had, you know, wanted to talk to like Denise Byron and like um, Mary Annarella and Gigi and whatever. So every single person that I hoped to meet at Rhinebeck appeared in front of me. Like I came out of a restaurant and Denise is standing on the sidewalk, you know, like, in the middle of nowhere in, you know, New York. I wanted to meet Mary Annarella. I was sitting there and she walks right, right, right up to me, like right in front of me, right, you know, and I wanted to meet Gigi, boom, she's right there, you know, so it, that was just amazing because it made me feel like everything that I wanted to do was right, you know what I mean, like it made me feel like I was on the right path because people, it was like people were just dropping in front of me <laughs> that I wanted to meet and talk to so that was that was great and Rhinebeck is insane but it was it's just talk about like a love fest oh it's overwhelming 
it's so overwhelming, but it's like the fact that everyone loves yarn there, like so, so much. It's really uh, awesome. Yeah, it was crazy. I met Louis Boria there too, like marched right up to him and, you know, and whatever. So it was great because then when I reached out to all these people later, I like sent them pictures of me with them. <laughs> so they, you know, because I was like, oh, I met you, you know, like they didn't meet 8 million people. <laughs> Here's the proof. So <laughs> it was just fun. That's awesome. Yeah. Christine, <laughs> this is the last question and it's not really a question. So what I do on my channel is the last question. I roll out the red carpet for you. Just share with us what's coming for the Knitting Yogi in the, la in the next the weeks or months or... Yeah. All of that. Yeah. All of that. All of that. So um, of that. luckily I've, I've been so, you know, people come to my virtual classes. So I, I'm going to keep doing them. So I have instructors lined up through February. Um, okay. So off. before we, we go yes. any further, uh, where do they actually can do these classes, meet these people, yeah. chat with you. Yeah. So, so I, do, yeah, so everything, you? everything's on my website. So my website's www.peacetreefiberadventures.com. So like peace, like a peace sign and a tree, yep. peace tree. Um, and I do virtual classes on zoom. So yep. we, we have zoom and, um, we have, in October next weekend. So it's October 16th through 18th. And we have um, Romy Hill and Rebecca McKenzie that yep. weekend. And it's all lace, all the lace, which oh, that's lace. I didn't even think about that. Yeah. So, <laughs> so all lace things. And then in November, we have two weekends in November, the 6th okay. through the 8th. And then we have, that's Mary Annarella and Melissa Leapman. Okay. And they're super fun. And then the following weekend, because I was supposed to have in-person retreats that got postponed, the following weekend after that is Louis Boria. And he's going to teach two classes. So Brooklyn Boy Knits, he's going to do uh, two classes in one day. So that'll be fun. So that's like a little bonus day. And then we'll skip December because holidays. Bye. And then, yeah, holidays. And then January, we're going to do Laura Nelkin and... Mika John. Okay. So that's going to be cool. And then in February, we have Tannis Gray and Rachel Kahn. And awesome. yeah, so it's going to be super cool. And then I'll keep going. And then hopefully, hopefully my uh, in-person retreats will get back to being hopefully able to April. Yeah. So in April, we have uh, in Cape Ann, Massachusetts, we have with Marla Cole. And then in May, we have here in my practically hometown of Niagara Falls, we have Nora Gone coming in May. So that'll be awesome. And then in next September, at Haystack, Haystack Mountain School of Crafts is our biggest event, which is called Knit Maine. And we'll have seven instructors and... Um, that's just like an amazing weekend. I mean, that location's amazing, like in Deer Isle, Maine, way up there in Maine. Um, but it's right on the water and it's like a dedicated artisan community school and oh, it's like the best. And, and we didn't get to have it last year. So that's going to happen, <laughs> happen next September and then Vermont again in November. So a lot coming up for 2021. And I'll put the link down below. Definitely. Yes. There's definitely, oh, yes. Yes. Awesome. And I'm, and I'm teaching a beginner class, um, on zoom next weekend as That's well. Awesome. Yeah. Yes. Yay. Yay. Christine. <laughs> thank you so much for your time. That was thank super you. fun. My it pleasure. Was, you know, thank you. I do really appreciate it. And Kim, Kimberly's awesome for reaching. Kimberly's like, you got to meet Sophie. She's the best. So, um, no, I really appreciate it. And this has been a lot of fun. Good questions. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. Thank Bye. you. Bye. <laughs>